Greetings, everybody. I am honored to introduce my Google Sum of Code project with Open Road. My name is Jack Glor from the National University of Singapore. I am mentored by Indira and Vitor from Precision Innovations. Documentation is often overlooked and underrated. So today, I would like to discuss on how we improve documentation and ease of usage for an open source project. Before we begin, allow me to introduce Open Road. Open Road is a leading open source foundational application for semiconductor digital design. It has full support for no human in the loop flow from RTL, meaning Verilog circuits, all the way to GDSII, which are manufacturable design formats used by foundries. Commercial in electronic design software is often expensive not to mention the closed source nature of the algorithms. Open Road seeks to address this limitation by making chip design easy, free for all to learn and apply. So whether you're a student, learner, researcher, or industry practitioner, you'll be able to use it. To date, in collaboration with eFabless, we have successfully contributed to over 600 tape outs in the 130 nanometer and 180 nanometer technology node. That is testament to the growing open source EDA community, and we hope to see this trend continue growing. Now, let us get into our summer project proper. Firstly, we have open uh, installation of open road for nine major operating systems. As we know, installation is often the hardest barrier for newcomers to acquaint themselves with a tool. The first thing we did was to check all installation scripts to make them up to date and also give more support for Docker-based commands, which is extremely flexible and runs on all operating systems. With this change, we have observed reduction of installation-related GitHub issues posted on a weekly basis. Secondly, we have also inserted missing documentations on various steps in the design flow. So on the right, you can see almost 20 tools that are being documented along with helpful information such as defaults and deep data types. The goal here is to embed the tool documentation with as much useful information as possible. So the end user does not need to do too much research on their end to get started. We have also introduced more consistent formatting. Rather than having all arguments for a function under a common table, we separated out into developer arguments and developer commands. This is to further make our documentation more beginner friendly to read while not alienating our technical user base. We have also added sections for example scripts and regression tests. This is to help onboard newcomers to each tool of our flow. Thirdly, we have also introduced extensible documentation formats. Now, what do we mean by extensible? It means that we have created an infrastructure which is easy to use for developers and allows for greater maintainability. Our goal is to create something that requires minimal changes to add content for documentation. So how do we do this? We introduced four initiatives, namely the warning slash error messages glossary. We noticed that people were searching for error and warning messages, but our documentation did not have them. So we added a page where all the error and warning messages came with the relevant code line number, and this was to be generated automatically. On top of that, Developers can add useful debug information to help the end user find out what's wrong with the error message. Next, we have also introduced automatically generated Doxygen pages, which integrates nicely into our C++ and Tickle source code framework. This automatic generation will make it much more convenient for developers to just insert comments into the source code and allow Doxygen to generate documentation automatically. Next, we introduce cloud-based packaging. 
It is important that our framework is able to be runnable on cloud and the ever more popular notebook format. Our collab based notebook was designed with this in mind and allows for easy transfer to other notebook providers with similar, uh, some modif modifications. Lastly, we have the change log workflow, which can be triggered manually. For our open source project, uh, we, had, we, we have chosen not to do software releases. This might mean that it can be difficult to track changes between commit numbers. Adding this workflow will generate a change log periodically that can help newcomers track, track the changes to our code base easier. And as you can see, we have grouped it by month. So we can actually have a nice overview of what, what has changed on the code base on a monthly basis. Finally, here are some of the thoughts we have in the works. We are have discussing the potential of creating a chatbot whose purpose is to answer user queries. We were thinking there are lots of domain knowledge in Slack channels, GitHub repos, and so on. So why not create an LLM-based chatbot? So this is currently in progress. So we'll update you as we go along. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for listening to my presentation. I would also like to thank Google and UCSC for making this entire open source research experience possible. I also like to thank the Open Road team, my mentors Indira and Vito for their advice and support throughout the project. Do support us by giving us a follow on our social media. Thank you once again.